This is a spoiler warning. If you've not yet seen The Lie of the Land, then go and watch it, then come back here. This is the truth. <laughs> Joining us this week is the man behind this season's monsters, from monks to Mendacians and from Eliza to Emojibots. It's Gary Pollard from Millennium FX. Thanks for having me. That's all right. And joining him, sadly due to the indisposition of Toby Whithouse, it's Luke from the internet. Thank you, Luke, for stepping in for Toby. It's nice to see you outside of your cupboard. How does it feel? Nice to be out of the internet <laughs> and with real people. It's amazing. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Oh, well, that's absolutely fine. Um, I kind of just say this is the hottest day of the year and uh, I have yet again <laughs> chosen well to dress up. Um, <laughs> so uh, the things I do for this show. Anyway, before we talk about the law of the land, can I just say the monks can control humanity, they can invade your memories, but they can't, you know, stop the bin men from going on strike. Like, <laughs> guys, it's, there's one, they, one thing they forgot and it, you know, it's the bins. They did leave the streets <laughs> quite, quite messy in this episode, didn't uh -huh. they? I feel like their the governmental policy on uh, recycling and rubbish collection, that went straight out the window and they took over. They were like, So yeah. much for this sort of pristine, happy life with the monks. So here we are at the, uh, well, the concluding part of a, of a three-parter featuring the monks. So many amazing performances in this episode, I, I would say. And um, what was really lovely as well, this episode being led by Pearl Mackey. Yeah. Um, we don't see the Doctor really for the first 15 minutes. Um, yeah, absolutely. Really strong performances uh, from her. And also Michelle Gomez, I think, who um, plays... Uh, a really different side of Missy. She's good in this episode, isn't she? She says she's becoming good and she has a little cry mm -hmm. remembering all the people mm -hmm. that she's killed. Yeah, it's very different. There's lots of role reversals. But I think, as you say, Pearl is... Pearl holds the episode in this one, you know. It's almost, it's like what we used to have with Doctor Who and you'd always have, you know, your love and monsters. You'd have a Doctor Light episode and that, that was yeah. kind of this. It felt like In that, a weird yeah. way and yet when we... Which is really nice because when you do see the Doctor, it's really kind of... And especially they... I, I think Toby really plays on the sort of, you know, the Doctor's bad and you sat there watching going, he's got to plan, he's got to plan, he's, he's going to be, he's going to come out any minute. And then when he does come out and he is like, you know, that big moment where Bill shoots the Doctor and you're like, and the big regeneration scare. And, but then the moment where he comes out and he's a Doctor again and you are just like, oh, there he I is. Mean, it's such a, such a nice go, moment. Like, like the, the regeneration thing, um, uh, as we're nearing the end of the series, you know, we know, unfortunately, yeah. It's coming. Yeah. Peter Peter will be going. I am personally starting it's... to look out for these moments yeah. where you think it's going to happen and I and I think I think um Stephen and the people people behind the show know this and I think they're going to tease us. Oh, absolutely. Forward. I remember And this is probably the first of many teasers. Oh, but, yeah, yeah. But uh Gary, you are the lead artist and workshop supervisor for Doctor Who at Millennium Effects. And you're responsible <laughs> for for creating the monks. Um which, yes. and you've brought some lovely um I guess maquettes are the maquettes or uh, this is, is a, a maquette. Yes, this is like a, a full mock-up of the head, full painted. Excellent. So when you get a script uh, and you see the description in the script, so so for instance, for for the monks, yeah. uh, in extremists, they were described as corpse-like faces. So I mean, just where do you start? Early on, there it was very different, and there were kung fu monks that were going to be oh. physical and fighting, and that was the first thought, and that's what this guy is. Mm. But later on, that evolved into more of the sort of the, the, the thinkers and the schemers and the mind controllers. So it, the idea is shifts and evolves. Yeah, yeah. And we just have to sort of throw it out of production because I say with very little information about these characters and just see if it uh, sparks any response. What's the first step then? Is it uh, do you, did you do sketches? Is that how I you did begin? do some sketches? Yes. I mean, for some of these things were part of sort of mind clearing exercises for me, if you like. Uh, and I have some here. Uh, which are sort of various sort of routes that can be taken. Uh, and, uh, yeah, again, these are all based on the first thoughts where these things were fighting monks. Oh. Yeah. Wow. So you've got ideas thrown through. He's got like a wooden carved sort of uh, van braces and he's got a bolus because there is a part in an early thing that I read where it takes out an entire SWAT team. Oh. One, one monk wakes up, takes oh, out wow. a SWAT team. So how can one dead monk fight? like half a dozen soldiers, so he needs weapons, and monks wouldn't have swords. So what else could he be have yeah. that would be more interesting? A bamboo pole is boring. <laughs> so I ended up with this carved sort of structure. It's like a, that would give him like scythe, a six it? foot reach. Yeah, but it's, it's possibly covered in symbols mm. that pertain to his faith and his yeah, culture, yeah, if you yeah. like, he carries with him. 
but would also be quite interesting visually if someone wanted to work with it like a movement guy and that's what this is and he has that with him oh, at yeah. all times amazing so that's what that became uh, and then i threw out a, one or two very sort of more frightening monk versions if you like really kind of extreme and quite scary but the one that they bought into was this guy this this painted guy here mm. where they thought no this is a good starting point for the guys that we want mm. in the show so we put that together and that sort of clarified it and started the ball rolling about that but the way it gets interesting is you can't have just one individual it's and i really like this in all the films that i've done where you get to make other characters in the same race mm. whether it's mummies or mangalores or whatever you, it is you get to do the stupid one and the fat one and the old one. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And that's where the fun comes in. So that just lets it out. I've got the starter and then I get to make all his friends, yeah. <laughs> which is delightful. We had um, Jamie on the show last week who uh, plays uh, a few of the monks. Yeah. At which point do you get actors in and start actually creating the prosthetics? Uh, well, if, if we have a specific makeup, and some of these guys have prosthetics which are very sort of you know, glued down to specific actors, then they will have to come in quite early in the process. Some of the other guys uh, are wearing like form fitted masks, but to do live casts and prosthetics for all of them was not practical. So some of them wearing very sort of tight and uncomfortable outfits that were really not created for them uh -huh. mm. specifically. But when it comes down to a prosthetic and dialogue, and you saw that one with the facial movement and there's some dialogue, and it's made for them. Wow, Precisely. and a live cast is uh, essentially a, a put your face in. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit clay. more technical than that. Yeah, uh, could like you a, could you go through that process? Yeah, it's like a lightweight sort of silicone we use that's like very skin friendly, where it's literally painted over the actor's face. He wears a ball cap to hide his hair, that's glued down, mm -hmm. and then he has to very patiently uh, hold a position. We don't block his airways. We're very careful about that. But then we paint his head completely in the in these materials that then will set and take a perfect impression of his head shape. You've been responsible for uh, a lot of the other sort of monsters and aliens in series 10 of Doctor Who. Yeah. What's been a highlight and what's been a challenge? The emoji box was a worrying one in for a while because I was trying to break up a human shape and we wanted to do it as a suit because you get the best performances out of a suit mm -hmm. where a guy is physically yeah, acting it as opposed to anything mechanical or puppeteered. But then again, you don't want something like something out of Buck Rogers that looks like a little man in a, yeah. an outfit that doesn't work. So I took some risks anatomically and structurally to make him an interesting shape, but then you're not quite sure if he'll be able to work in it mm. well and be able to walk well. Mm. He was never going to run in it, we knew that. <laughs> so if he's going to whiz about, he would need wheels or something else, some different approach. I guess that's, that's a, another big thing you have to consider with something like that, is it's not just how it looks, it's also the practicality yeah. of it. You're, you're actually building a, a suit that needs to be functional. Yes, so I can and there was an issue quite... with the arms. I, I gave them very retro, because I love this 50s sci-fi, yeah. the corrugated arms with the pincers. Yeah. And again, uh, breaking it up, don't see a guy in it, look at think of it's a mechanical yeah, construct. Yeah. But then they said, no, we'll shoot, we've shot on this, but we really would like something more dexterous for like handing plates and doing other things and yeah. hugging and stuff. So then we quickly reworked a set of human shaped arms to go with it. But then we ended up with a richer sort of picture because we see in the garden, we see the corrugated guys, the retro ones doing some gardening. And then later we see our more human sort of shaped yeah, ones yeah. Uh, doing other stuff. And it actually it worked out in the end really very nicely. So it's quite pleasing. We've caught some glimpses of uh, like a an Empress ice cream, yeah, which yeah. looks incredible. It was fantastic because uh, A, we like to rework uh, old classics, don't we, of mm. course. And we, I knew that there was plenty of figures within the Ice Warrior world where uh, we hadn't seen them yet. We were just seen a single warrior. So this to do with this sort of feminine Empress royalty version was the best thing. Yeah. yeah. And um, through the process of banter with Wayne, the director, and, and, and the production, uh, it kept sort of shifting into what I wanted, and it's not all about me, of course. <laughs> but, when it, but when it becomes like, I'm sure this is right for the show, and everyone's starting to agree yeah, and come yeah, together yeah. with a single vision, you're not like going, I don't think they've got a fantastic script idea, but I don't think they're quite mm. asking for the right things. But then, okay, more of a challenge for me to deliver something that's different. But this was like, it worked out so beautifully. I'm, yeah. I'm most proud in the whole series of... of 
that character. Oh. She looks, so I can't she looks amazing. Dreadlocks, just dreadlocks. Everything. So fab. Just, yeah, yeah. 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 So good. So good. yeah, that's all for me, the dreadlocks. <laughs> I'm so pleased. I hope there's, there's a bit Predator, not really. No, uh, it's great. It's no, great. I'm just yeah. away from that. And then, but she's, I've gave her a helmet that is again linked to the authority figure in one of the Peladon. Yeah, the, I was going to say because the Grand Marshal. Yeah, because yeah. he's very much. Uh, that must be very interesting when you're when you're reinventing classic. Yeah. So do you, do you go back and look through all these totally things and take like in lots of yeah. knowledge around those? I don't want to reinvent. I want yeah, to yeah. fall in and fit. That evolution of that race and go yes. well. If this yeah. is what the Grand Marshal looks like, then this is what an Empress yeah. would look like. Absolutely, yeah, it yes. totally feels right. And then it does feel right. Yeah. So and it, it did actually work. Speaking of classic uh, foes, mm. the Mendacian side men are coming back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what was it like to? to <laughs> Luke's very happy. Very happy about that. <laughs> very happy about that. Um, That's what people are. Yeah. Yeah. What was it like to uh, bring back a, a design icon? Uh, it was exciting, but what a great challenge because you cannot have, you know, the purists will go, why have you changed it? But you cannot have, because I mean, they had sellotape sticking them together yeah, in those yeah. days that you couldn't see on those low, low res yeah. sort of cameras. And the boxes are so big and heavy, they can barely stand yeah. up straight and you can't get your arms past your own life support unit. So you can't literally transplant that into the modern world. But again, you need to be faithful. Mm. So it was all about slightly ergonomically toning it down, bringing it into the lines of the body, mm -hmm. making it look like it's bulletproof as well. And it, you know, putting a nice metal frame on things. Mm. And I thought, well, it's if you saw this piece of machinery in the Royal Free Hospital, you <laughs> wouldn't go, oh, that's a weird alien bit of machinery. Yeah, it's just yeah. like a normal yeah. machine. It's functioning. That is, yeah. And whoever's built these things has had no concerns about it looking good. They just wanted it simple, riveted, tough yeah. and yeah. it works and lasts forever uh, and and nobody is going to be knocked the corners off to a nice curve and an ergonomic sort of tube and elegant and cool fit. any cultural stuff is nowhere to be seen it's purely mm. functional and that's a right. challenge because every time i wanted to style it it was like stop <laughs> yeah. yeah no leave the corners on leave the tubes like you know the, the plumbing external stuff yeah. leave leave that there just make it look like it's tough could oh, you tell yeah. us um uh some of the other things that you worked on uh, I did Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, oh, the Vogons for oh, Henson. Oh, they're so good. Yeah, they're, they're like genuinely one of my favourite things on screen. They oh, are yeah. so good. <laughs> good. I used to and have the, the toy. Space. I used to have yeah. the toy. Of, sorry, that. Yeah, because were they not like Jim Henson as well? Sorry, this is getting me really yeah, yeah, excited. Yeah. Were they like like Jim Henson like puppets or something? Are they, like on the yes. face or something? Or? Yes. No, they were, they were mainly animatronic. So that is a mechanical face movement. But it was beautifully done, I have to say. They really speak they so very good. well, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, they just right. look so believable. They're yeah. genuine, like one of the most. So I've just realised that <laughs> big fan sat next to you, just like <gasps> you did those. That's so good. Sorry, that's yeah, good. Yeah. Phantom Menace. I did uh, the Nemoidians. You know, like the politicians. I love the Phantom the Crazy, Menace. crazy hats. Can I just Star say, Wars as well? Can I just Sorry, say? Gonna... Can I just say? Well, this is uh, this is not. I mean, this is going really off topic because it's, you know it's Doctor Who. Yeah. Unpopular opinion. I like the Phantom Menace. And, yeah. Uh, the Phantom <laughs> Menace is my favourite Star Wars film because I, I wow. grew up with those. Thank wow, you. Very good. Thank you. Very good. <laughs> Darth Maul. I had Darth Maul rollerblades when I was uh, six years old, seven years old. I did want to mention that though because uh, because I he heard you mention it before because I don't think you know a lot of fans. I think it's interesting to fans to to hear, you know, where people have come from, what other mm. things they've worked on before. Yeah, I think it's incredible yeah. that you've got this amazing CV and Doctor Who is one of the many things that you worked on. Mm. I just think that's awesome. That is amazing. But so I am good. where I want to be. Oh. Exactly. Because I am a huge fan of Doctor Who. Yeah. And I love the process and I like working at Millennium Effects, although they don't need to know that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I am delighted to be working on Doctor Who. Yeah. You know, yeah. This is the, the job that I really want to do and it's nice. Oh, that's so, so I'm, lovely. I'm, ha I'm happy there. So you we get a good show. So and I get to see the work. If it's worked out, again, it's not, I'm not always great at looking at my own stuff, but I'm watching it with my two sons. Yeah. And they're bought into it and the, yeah. and the, the younger son is not a Doctor Who fan particularly. Yeah. But the older one is, but the younger one has stayed with this series ten, and you know stayed in the room if you like, yeah. Yeah. and been and enjoyed it with me. And and then my older son, if something horrible happens, he goes, Dad, <laughs> <laughs> he blames <"That's> you. you. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, maybe. You it's, gave it's me got, nightmares. Got, yeah. You're doing this, Dad. <laughs> it's got a bit to do with me, a little bit to do with me. There's thousands of other people working uh. on it as well. Well, thank you so much, Gary, for coming on the show and uh, talking us through your amazing work and also bringing a couple of friends along too. You're yeah, very welcome. Now, there's one more thing to do. Uh, would you like to play Top of the Locks? I've been waiting. Excellent. Like, let's get to it. Roll Sting. <laughs> 
So this is Top of the Locks, where we measure the ups and downs of hair in who. Uh, there are episodes along the bottom and uh, truth up the side instead of intensity. Uh, I blame the monks. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think? Should we go to the doctor Yes, first? in terms of big hair, I can sort of sympathise with the hair thing. Yeah. <laughs> so it's going to go quite high. Oh, you're going to put him quite high straight? I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, if it was up to me, I would put, I would put Peter at the top every week. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't I, want to influence the decision as well because I'm not really allowed yeah, as the yeah. host. But um, I have to say, Peter's hair was... Ooh, Actually, it was oh, really good in this episode. It was very good. So yeah. good. It was so very, good. very wispy. Um, I'm really happy with that because that means we've rated him the highest this series. So oh. I think that's good. Pearl, I uh, would I would put her very highly, but basically because we got to see more of her in this episode. So maybe I would put her just underneath Peter. Maybe. I thought I got close. Right. Yeah, yeah, just right there. there. Sure. There we go. Uh, next, do you want to do Nardole next? Uh, he was so good, wasn't he? He's I think, great. I, I mean, think they're all going to sort of cl cluster, sort of. Yeah, okay, we're, 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 we're going to rate them all highly. This is, I can see a pattern yeah. emerging. No one's going to be shamed. Uh, and then, I mean, if, I mean, hair-wise, Michelle Gomez, Missy, this series mm. is phenomenal. And she's, be, she's very frizzy in this episode. Mm -hmm. Her hair's very frizzy and we get to see a lot of her. Uh, I don't know, is she above Peter, though? Would she be above the Doctor? Or, mm, controversial. Um, uh, I, w I would personally mm -hmm. put her above Nardole. I would squeeze him down. Sure? Yeah. Poor Nardole. Sorry, sorry Nardole. Look at that, Just... bunched up. Oh, well, thank you so much, and uh, we will uh, keep an eye on that as the weeks progress. And now, over to Luke in the internet. Come on, then. Cool, oh, blimey, it's all fidget spinners and doggos out there in the internet, or the truth, as we're calling it today. Let's go. So, the pyramid at the end of the world seems to have tickled your creative taste buds, with Hayden and Lewis making these beautiful pieces. Xiaojo chilled us with this massively creepy watercolour and pen effort. And Moga offered this cute little cartoon of what's going on behind the vault door. Turns out, you were pretty close. It was also Pearly Mag's birthday last Monday, and several of you sent her lovely drawings, including these pieces from Joe and Valentina. But it's not just drawings that you lot are good at. No, you've been mighty creative with all kinds of media. Joel emailed us his take on the Series 10 key image made of Lego. Nice work, Joel. And Macklin used ponies. Yes, ponies, though admittedly clay ones, to reenact the Doctor's initial meeting with Missy. A scene there from Dark Horser, the penultimate episode of Series 8. Can we stop horsing around now? Meanwhile, over at Dundon Mifflin, PJ spotted that the monks were clearly fans of the US office, having heavily invested in Sabre Pyramid tablets. Over in New Jersey, John has built an amazing TARDIS for his 12th Doctor figure. It lights up and everything, and I really want one. And finally, Doctor Who writer and friend of the show, Sarah That's So Raven Dollard, is heading to Gallifrey One convention next year, and is after your cosplay suggestions. We think she should go as Pete from Thin Ice. Remember Pete? Stood on the butterfly? Nice chap. Well, that's the truth for this week. Don't forget, if you've seen anything nice, tweet us at DWTheFanshow or email us DWTheFanshow at BBC.com. Right, I'm back off to the studio. Much internet, very wow. Wish me luck. Bye. Oh. Okay. Yep, turns out the internet, very <laughs> high speed. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Gary and Luke, for coming on the show. What did you think of The Lie of the Land? Let us know in the comments below. Next week, we'll be having tea on Mars with some chaps called Mark Gatiss and Matt Lucas. I don't know where they are. To see a preview of Empress of Mars, click here. And to subscribe to the official Doctor Who YouTube channel, click here. We'll see you next week.